Next, I want to introduce Ellie Igo, who's the co-owner of Solidarity Farms, and will also give us a quick update on her project. Hey everyone, can you hear me okay? I know I'm out here in the in the sticks, so can someone give me an yes. Excellent. No, we can hear you. And can you see my slides? No, yes, I no. see you. <laughs> no, I see you. See Have me. you shared your desktop? Okay. Good. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna try one more time. There we go. There, there you go. And yep. There we go. Awesome. I, unlike many people, haven't spent much time on Zoom lately, so I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, so, as um, my name is Ellie, I'm a co-owner of Solidarity Farm, but we collaborate really closely with our landowners, the Pama Band of Luiseno Indians, um, and together we make up the Carbon Sink Demonstration Farm. Um, we're a Together, we're a commercial farm and social enterprise that is working to build a more resilient and equitable food system. And because of who we are and because of the land that we're on, our research is really focused at the intersection of traditional ecological knowledge and regenerative agriculture. And I think it's just important to emphasize that our perspective is that healthy soil should build healthy food and that healthy food should be available to all people. So since 2007, oh, and this is one of my favorite photos of, of what I mean by making food really accessible, it means getting them out here on the farm um, and making sure they know how valuable um, farms are to people. Um, since 2017, we've focused on building healthier soil through six carbon farming strategies, and we've been utilizing a combination of um, public and private foundations to help us do that. Um, I really, I want to point out that this is really what I, we would call common sense farmer-led research and development um, through Healthy Soils grants, through NRCL, NRCS contracts, um, but we're really trying to look at how we can make these practices um, viable and, and really useful um, in a commercial far farming operation. So the six um, strategies that we are working on, number one is transitioning to um, perennial crops, number two is utilizing cover crops, um, number three, we've transitioned 50% um, of our diversified row crops to no-till, um, and we apply an epic amount of compost and mulch to those rows. Um, number four is working on improving um, our silva pasture and animal integration into our systems. Number five is um, hedgerows and windbreaks. We put in um, over 4,000 um, linear feet of hedgerows in the last year. And then the last one is identifying traditional foods that can aid in soil regeneration and learning or relearning how to process and utilize those foods and make them part of our food system once again. So uh, many of the speakers um, pointed out today that we're seeing tangible benefits with the most in, in but for us, the most significant increases we've seen in our no-till beds where we've been applying epic amounts of, of compost and mulch. Um, but it's really, uh, we were surprised to see um, how much um, the tilled row crops even, where we're incorporating um, compost and mulch are, are doing better than the 1% where we started. But you can see here that it's really just in the, the other beds that we're starting to push over the 4% goal that we have for organic soil. Um, over the well, we set a goal in 2017 that by 2020 we'd be at four percent. So I look forward to doing another test um, on these um, at the end of, of spring. So, um, but since we're commercial farmers, we also have an equal focus on production um, as we do on distribution. And so I wanted to spend just a few moments talking about the uptick in interest in local farms. Um, and not only um, get, or as a result of the pandemic and the opportunity we have to talk about the link between our production practices and our distribution habits and the reality of future catastrophes um, if we fail to address climate change. So um, there's been an incredible surge in online sales of CSAs, um, which has helped a lot of small regenerative local farms, not only to survive, but to thrive during the pandemic. But then at the other hand, we've seen a lot of stories about farmers who have lost all of their contracts and are tilling crops into the ground and destroying animals. Um, our food system 
has never been this visible to the general population. And there's a huge opportunity, I think, to talk about the links between health and equity. Um, I don't have to time here to go into the details about what our approach has been since the pandemic, but I just want to emphasize uh, how critical it is for us to demonstrate leadership at this time. And as farmers, as scientists, and as people with vision, um, because I, I'd like to believe that COVID is the only crisis that we're going to face um, together. But now, you know, with hindsight over the last couple of months, that seems incredibly naive. And rebuilding healthy soils, growing more local food, and ensuring equitable distribution of that food, is inc it's an incredibly important mandate. So um, I guess I just want to finish by saying, let's not forget to throw some mulch and compost on our healthy soils movement, because uh, I have a, a strong feeling that higher yields are going to be critically important to our future.